everyone, I'm Katie. Thank you so much for joining me today for another question from the comments section. And this comes from a subscriber that said, is there another way to play the B-flat because I can't play it? Well, before I show you an alternate to the B-flat, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that may help you that have helped me and also my students as well. When we have our B-flat, a lot of times these strings are muffled. And I'm gonna show you a couple things that will help you. First of all, you have to hold your ukulele in the proper position. So posture is number one. Ukulele neck is up at a 45 degree angle. This is very important because if it's parallel to the floor, it's not necessarily a problem, but especially when it's pointed down, my wrist is going to be bent and I'm not going to be able to get the uh, strength from my hand position to be able to push down on the strings and not have to work as hard, okay? You're gonna end up working harder if it's here. And I've also found with parallel, it can be very, very difficult. If you bring your ukulele neck up at a 45 degree angle, it's going to relieve a lot of your wrist tension. So that brings me to the position of my wrist on my left hand. I've heard Craig Chi talk about this. I wanna give credit where credit is due, where he said, uh, he used a metaphor of piano fingers versus violin fingers. And so piano fingers are straight up and down. There's some different philosophies of thought, you know, with different um, like classical guitarists and technique, things like that, where you have straight up and down, and then you have angle. I like the angle. And this is something that I also refer to with my students as the Brian May, that's uh, the guitarist from Queen. And he, if you look at just like still shots of him playing, you'll notice that his fingers are always at an angle like this when he's playing on the upper part of the fretboard. We are going to form our chord one finger at a time or one step at a time. Take finger number one, place that on the first fret of the first string, and then I want you to place it right behind the fret, okay? Not toward the nut. The closer you are toward that nut, the more you're going to have to work. So if I try to push down, you'll notice, man, that feels very, very stiff. Bring it closer to the fret. That's the metal bar. And then I want you to gently touch the string and then pluck the string. It's going to be muffled at first and then gently and slowly apply pressure to the string until you get a clear sound. Once you get a clear sound, stop. Don't press any harder than that, okay? That's all the pressure that you need in order to play that string, make it sound nice. Now let's repeat the process with the second string and the first string, okay? So we're right behind the fret and I want you to gently push down and try plucking those two strings until you get a clear sound. Now you can use the pad of your finger, that's fine. I like to roll my finger a little bit onto its side. So you see that on the indentations where the strings have left marks on my finger, it's more so on this side of my finger rather than the pad of my finger. Okay, that would be violin fingers versus, oh sorry, piano fingers versus violin fingers. Right here, straight up and down. Here, a little bit at an angle. So yes, it is gonna be a little bit this way and your elbow has to come out just a little bit but you'll notice that you'll get just a little bit more of a clamp with your hand if you bring it out a little bit at an angle. You may have to adjust a little bit, but you're trying to build muscle memory, okay? Don't try to get it perfect right away. You're trying to build muscle memory. That's very important to remember. Remember, I can say remember. <laughs> All right, now add middle finger. Now, we add the third finger. All right, so that's a way that you can build good habits to form a nice B flat. Another way that you can just kind of skirt around it is that if you just push down on strings four, three, and two, and then you mute this one with this portion of your finger, you still get a B flat triad. You still get a one, three, five. It's just that one is going to be muted. Now here's another way to skirt around that B flat, but it's on the upper part of the neck. So I'm taking a G chord shape like this and I am bringing it all the way up to the fifth 
and the sixth fret, and I am muting this string, the fourth string, with my thumb. So if it's open, you're forming a different chord, basically. It sounds really pretty, but it may not fit the context in which the song that you're playing. So then I like to take my thumb, curl it over. If you lightly touch it, you mute the string, and as you strum, you get a B flat alternative. So that's a different voicing. One more suggestion for you is that you might want to switch out your ukulele strings for fluorocarbon. So these are DR Moonbeams. The Dario also makes some really nice fluorocarbon strings, and they are softer to the touch that I have found, uh, in my personal opinion. But I noticed that when my beginner students, if their strings feel really stiff, really tight, then um, a nice alternative to be able to try something, just to be able to try to ease that tension, is switching out their strings strings with fluorocarbon strings. A lot of my students, when they switch to fluorocarbon, they're like, oh my gosh, this is so nice. <laughs> so I want to give you that suggestion. If you don't know how to change your strings, I have a video on how to change your strings on different headstocks and uh, also with different types of bridges. So I'm going to put that in the cards above in the description box below. I hope that helps. For my complete ukulele 101 and 201 courses, as well as bar chord bootcamp, please visit my Patreon page. If you have another question, anybody, let me know. Is there a way that I can help you out? I would love to be able to do that. I will see you in the next one, and thank you so much. Bye!